Welcome to footballgameplan.com where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Bring you our 2013 NFL team preview. We're taking a look at the Miami Dolphins. We're gonna break down their offense, their defense, as well as their special teams to see what we can expect from the Dolphins this upcoming season. Ryan Tannehill's rookie year went as I expected it to go, which was up and down, sometimes in the same game. You can look at that Seattle game to see what I'm talking about. So for rookie standards, he did a fair job. Now, what you want to see this year moving forward, you want to see the growth. You want to see a guy get rid of the football faster, make better decisions with the football, protect the football a lot better, and keep these guys in good down and distance type of situations. And I want to see the coaching staff utilize his athleticism more. That's one of the more underrated aspects about Tannehill's game that went unutilized last season I want to see more of that and that's just going to open up the offense now behind Tannehill you have Matt Moore a solid veteran a guy that can come in and win some games for you if you need him to the only issue with Matt Moore and the reason why he's not starting is that he's streaky and if you're going to take a chance on a streaky quarterback you might as well go with the younger guy in Tannehill so that's why he's a backup they brought him back they like what he brings to the table and he's going to have to fend off Pat Devlin for that number two job who was a very solid prospect himself coming out of Delaware I'm a big fan of Lamar Miller and what he brings to the table. This is a guy that has elite acceleration. You don't find acceleration like this every day in a running back. And I think now that he's going to get the bulk of the carries, it's going to bode well for that Dolphins offense as they might lean more on a running game this year. And in the draft, they took Mike Gillisley out of Florida. Here's a guy that impressed me week in, week out, just got better as the season progressed. Another guy with sneaky breakaway speed, very tough inside runner, but he's also a very good pass protector as well. So the Dolphins can get creative by utilizing both Miller and Gillisley in the backfield at the same time, just giving defenses that much more to worry about. Now, in my opinion, the third and fourth running back spots are up for grabs, and there's a bunch of guys vying for that opportunity. You look at Daniel Thomas returning from injury. He's looking to rebound after a subpar 2012 campaign. He's going to have to hold up Jonas Gray, and in my opinion, this is a guy I think will win this spot, and that's Cameron Marshall, the undrafted rookie out of Arizona State. Big bruiser type of guy, short yardage runner, but also has a little bit of wiggle to break some tackles and get yards in chunks. So I think Marshall has an excellent opportunity to make the Dolphins roster. And Charles Clay is another guy that's looking to rebound from a subpar 2012 season, also returning from injury, but he's a valuable asset because of his ability to go downfield and catch passes and make plays in a passing game. Brian Hartline is the leading receiver and he returns after signing a brand new contract. He's one of the more dependable receivers you'll find in the AFC. This guy shows up to play down in, down out, week in, week out, and has been a favorite of Ryan Tannehill. But it was clear that the Dolphins wanted to upgrade their receiving core, which is why they went after Mike Wallace and paid him top dollar. The reason why Mike Wallace is such a hassle for a defense is because of his elite level speed. When you have a guy that's that fast and dangerous running after the football, you as an offense can start to dictate coverage because you know wherever Mike Wallace lines up, they can only play a certain type of coverage. Now, on his end, he has to catch the football consistently in order to be a consistent threat. That's why they paid him top dollar. And I'm also a big fan of another free agent signee, Brandon Gibson, whom they signed away from the St. Louis Rams. Here's a super athletic wide receiver, always laying out for passes and not afraid to sacrifice his body. That's what you want, helping out your young quarterback. And they also bring in Dustin Keller, one of the better tight ends in the league. So bolstering the passing game was a clear mission heading into the offseason and he definitely accomplished their goal now also keep an eye on some undrafted rookie free agents like jeff fuller who was in camp last year played at texas a and i still like his potential and jasper collins out of mount union that outstanding division three program saw him up close and personal at the east west shrine game doing a great job getting in and out of his breaks showing that quickness that you want for a guy that's probably going to run those underneath routes Gone from the offensive line is Jake Long, the former number one overall selection, but the Dolphins still have a very good interior offensive line. I'm a big fan of it. You look at Mike Pounce, and this guy is one of the best centers in the game already in his short career. 
dominates in the running game and is also a very good pass protector. Next to him, you have Richie Incognito. When he's not getting personal foul penalties, he's actually a pretty darn good guard. I love the way he opens up holes as well in a running game. They also signed Lance Lewis from the Chicago Bears, another guy to help bolster the interior of that offense. So from guard to guard, I do believe the Dolphins are very solid. The questions, in my opinion, lie on the flanks, the bookends. You have to replace Jake Long. So they're moving Jonathan Martin, who was a rookie last year and started at right tackle. They're moving him to the left side. Now, he struggled at times last year, so it's a big question and concern going into the 2013 season, protecting the blind side of Tannehill. And they also signed Tyson Claybo from Atlanta, the eight-year vet out of Wake Forest, to help solidify the right side of the offensive line, replacing Martin. And when you look at the draft, taking Dallas Thomas in the third round was a good pick, in my opinion, because he has that versatility to play guard or tackle, so he provides that good depth that you want behind your front line starters competing with John Jerry, Josh Samuda, another guy out of UMass, keep an eye on, former undrafted free agent last year, made the roster. So again, the Dolphins have some depth on the interior. The questions still going into the season lie on the flanks. Dolphins have the best defensive line in the AFC East and one of the better defensive lines in the NFL. You look at this team last year, 7th in sacks with 42 and 7th in points allowed at 19 points a game. They're led by Cameron Wake. Since coming over from the CFL, this guy has been a terror on opposing quarterbacks. In his four-year career, he has averaged over 10 and a half sacks a season. And you look at Jared Idris, one of the more solid run defenders at the defensive end position. But the Dolphins did something interesting in the draft that I really like. They traded up to grab a guy that's one of the more athletic defensive pass rushers in this draft in Deion Jordan out of Oregon. He's so athletic, he can even line up as an outside linebacker and shade over a slot wide receiver and actually do a great job in coverage. So you get versatility, you get more speed on your defensive front when you're rushing the passer. On the interior, they have one of the best defensive tackles in the game in Randy Starks. This is a guy that had a sound career for Tennessee, but became a star once he became a Miami Dolphin. Provides that interior pressure that you want at that defensive tackle position. Next to him is the six foot, 345 pound Paul Soliai, seven year man out of Utah, does a great job in stopping, running, occupying blockers, freeing up those one on one opportunities for Cameron Wake to get on the outside. And there's solid depth behind these guys with Olivier Vernon, who's a second year player last year as a rookie he had three and a half sacks he just has to find that consistency to stretch out that production over 16 games and Vaughn Martin a 6'4 308 pound defensive tackle out of Western Oregon big time player good rotational guy to have on your defensive front When you look at the linebacking core of the Dolphins, you have to be impressed with Cole Misi and his versatility. That's going to help you out in the long run, being able to play two different spots. He can play on the inside as well as on the outside. But they made the big splash by going to get inside backer Donnell Ellerby from the Baltimore Ravens. He brings a lot of speed and athleticism along with Jelani Jenkins, who they drafted this year out of Florida. So they wanted to get younger. They wanted to get faster. They also bring over Phillip Wheeler. But there's no doubt that the Dolphins want to get better on the back end. And it starts with the linebacking core, and that could ultimately determine their success as a football team. In the secondary, the Dolphins have a bona fide star, in my opinion, in Rashad Jones, the safety out of Georgia. Here's a guy that's versatile to play in the box. You see right there making tackles and also has the range to cover deep on the back end to eliminate mistakes. Now, they do need another safety to come in and compete. That's why I think undrafted free agent Keelan Johnson has a legit shot to make the team. This guy was a phenomenal player for the Sun Devils. And he's going to do all he can to try to push Chris Clemens for playing time back there, who was re-signed in the offseason. Now at cornerback is where you see most of the shakeup taking place. Gone is Vontae Davis and Sean Smith. Now you have Richard Marshall back there who's coming off an injury and has to play consistent and show that he's healthy. But I do like the signing, the very underrated signing of Brent Grimes. You talk about a guy that has Mega Man hops and has ball skills, you're talking about Brent Grimes. If he checks out medically and is back 100%, from the Achilles injury, this guy could be a steal for the Dolphins and would likely re-sign to a long-term deal. They also drafted Jamar Taylor out of Boise State in the second round, one of my favorite prospects in the draft. Physical corner, again, a guy that has ball skills but definitely can play press. Similar to Sean Smith with his style of play, so you do have addition by subtraction. They also drafted Will Davis out of Utah State, so you have a lot of guys vying for playing time at the number two and number three cornerback position. They definitely need those guys to step up in the worst way because this is a team that last year ranked 27th in pass defense, giving up almost 250 yards a game.
There's a reason why the Dolphins spent the fifth round selection on Caleb Sturgis out of Florida. This is a guy that has a tremendous leg. So once you cross the 50, you're within his range. And if the Dolphins are going to move the football like they plan to do this season, they need someone like Sturgis that can connect on long field goals. And when you look at punter Brandon Fields, who boomed over 50 yards of punt last year, making him one of the best punters in the league, that's definitely a good weapon to have on your football team, pinning teams deep and hoping your defense can get off the field on third down. And when you look at the return game, Marcus Thickpin had a touchdown on kickoff and on punt return last year. He may get challenged, however, by Mike Gillisley, so it's a good problem to have for the Miami Dolphins. Reason for optimism for Miami, you look at what they did in the offseason. They bring in a lot of good free agents, guys that were very productive on their former teams. Joe Philbin is turning the team into what he wants it to be, bringing in his guys. So this has his thumbprint all over it. So you have no reason but to be optimistic about the 2013 Dolphins. The cause for concern, in my opinion, is Ryan Tannehill in that passing game. I'm still not sold on Tannehill as a quote-unquote franchise guy. I think what you saw last year is what you're going to see this year from Tannehill, but you hope he can develop that chemistry with Mike Wallace and Brandon Gibson. If they can progress week in, week out, then the Dolphins can definitely win more games than what they did last season. Now let's look at what the Dolphins do have on this team. They have an excellent defensive line, by far one of the best in the AFC. And overall, they're a very athletic bunch, both offensively and defensively, and have a very good interior offensive line. What the Dolphins lack, they lack a passing game. And the only reason why I say they lack a passing game is because we haven't seen these guys work together yet. I think they also lack a solid left tackle. Yes, Jonathan Martin was groomed to be that left tackle, but he struggled at right tackle. So I'm still worried about that position as a whole. And they also lack a bona fide number one target at wide receiver. Can Mike Wallace be that guy? We shall see. The road to the Super Bowl for the Dolphins goes as follows. Number one, the passing game must come alive week one and throughout the course of the season. If they don't, they're going to struggle offensively. Number two, the back seven, you're talking about the linebackers and the secondary, they have to come to play week in, week out as well. And third, quietly, the Dolphins were in playoff contingent throughout the course of the season. They could have taken that last playoff spot from the Indianapolis Colts. They got to learn to close out tight games in order to be successful. Have the Dolphins finishing third in the AFC East. I still have some questions about the offensive side of the football. I have no questions about the defense. I even think the secondary will be vastly improved and Brent Grimes will prove to be a steal for this team. But on offense, questions about the passing game, question about the left tackle position. I have no doubts about the running game. But if things start to break early for the Dolphins in a good way, this is a team that could find themselves in the thick of the playoff hunt once again this year. And I also want to give a huge shout out to Dolphin Fan Forms for always showing football game plan support.